Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Boudier, I'm the product team at Hugging Face. Super excited to talk to you uh, today. How many of you know Hugging Face? Uh, nice! Very cool. I was a little, a little scared there because like, I didn't really do an entry-level talk uh, very much. Hugging Face, of course, stands for the emoji. And uh, I know you've been uh, in listening mode for, for about an hour, so maybe uh, let's do a little participative thing. Do you know, do, can you do for me like the hugging face? And we take a little selfie? To, yeah, you got it. Okay, and we do a little selfie together. How about that? Hold on, we need widescreen for this. Okay. One, two, three! <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you, that was all. Um, so I want to do three things uh, in this uh, little presentation. First, I want to tell you about the latest and greatest uh, available in Hugging Face. Second, I want to uh, walk you through how you can build AI with Hugging Face. And then the third thing is how you put it together with everything that Shai talked about. And so, 11 things about Hugging Face you probably didn't know already. And actually, I made these slides maybe on Monday or Tuesday, and I want to add two more things. <laughs> because yesterday, uh, Mistral AI dropped a 7 billion uh, large language model that uh, seems to outperform uh, most uh, models in that category, in that weight category, actually even higher than this weight, like 13B. Apparently, it outperforms Llama 13B, so it's a really exciting new model. Um, that is uh, available uh, on day one on Hugging Face, um, including in the text generation inference uh, library, and you can deploy it one click uh, on Hugging Face inference endpoints for just a dollar an hour. Okay, that's uh, Mistral 7B. The second thing that happened yesterday is we announced a partnership with Cloudflare uh, to enable serverless GPU. Uh, for large language models. Uh, so it's super exciting for developers who want affordable uh, sort of uh, uh, inference. And now, 11 things about uh, Hugging Face you may not know. The first thing is our mission. So our mission is to democratize good machine learning. And by good, we mean machine learning that is open source. We mean machine learning that is community driven. And we mean machine learning that is built from ethics first principles. And speaking of ethics first principles, we have an amazing team at Hugging Face uh, Ethics and Society team, and they put out a lot of great resources so that our users, you, can practice ethics first machine learning in your day to day job. And they have a great page on hf.co slash ethics that sums up all these great tools you can use, measuring uh, biases in data sets, how to chart ethical guidelines for your projects, etc. So check it out. And they have a newsletter with a bunch of great content that's going to come out in the next few days. Three, um, Hugging Face is known for its open source. And in fact, it's one of the most popular uh, open source companies as measured by this uh, vanity metric of uh, GitHub stars. Uh, 25th in the world. And we're very much known for the Transformers library, which is how you can easily access all those models, large or not large language models. Uh, but there's also an ecosystem of uh, custom-built tools to do um, uh, very interesting things. I mentioned text generation inference, which is how you can deploy uh, LLMs um, in a very accelerated way for production. There is the optimum library that enables you to accelerate your own models uh, by quant quantizing them and applying other tricks. Uh, there is the PEFT library, which stands for parameter efficient fine tuning. So you can actually adapt those models very efficiently uh, with a, a handful of dollars uh, and a few hours. So a lot of great tools that you need to take advantage if you want to build your own uh, generative AI applications. And on the Hugging Face Hub. Today, you can find over 300,000 free and public models. Actually, we host over a million repositories, models, data sets, machine learning applications. And so that means that whichever uh, sort of uh, machine learning task uh, you're trying to uh, accomplish, we have great models for you, right? Whether it's natural language processing, this is where the Transformers library sort of started a couple years ago. You can do anything from translation, from summarization, from generating text, from classifying, sentiment, etc. cetera. Um, for uh, vision, you can detect objects and images, faces, uh, um, 
uh, take the, the, the background away, etc. Uh, with uh, speech audio, uh, you can transcribe speech, you can recognize speakers, you can generate audio, and the list goes on. So a, a very easy way to dive into this world is to look through the task uh, sort of abstraction, and you can do so uh, by going to huggingface.co slash tasks. And all these models generate a ton of activity. So there are over a million models being downloaded every single day uh, on the Hugging Face Hub. And that includes, of course, text, but also audio and also vision. So it's really the whole of machine learning. I think it's very exciting moments we are now today as like a data scientist or machine learning engineer because it's the first time in history that everybody's uh, building on the set, same set of common tools and the same set of abstractions, right? Thanks to the transformer model, that is now the best way to approach all of these different uh, disciplines. Now, let's talk about large language models because that is the topic of the day. Uh, there are over a thousand open models today uh, that are available on a Hugging Face Hub. I think there's actually over 30,000 checkpoints that are available thanks to all of the community fine tunings. This all started, of course, with Meta releasing the initial Llama model uh, that provided a great alternative to closed source models. And ever since, uh, the community has been uh, working feverishly to produce ever better, more efficient models. Um, when you look at those models, once something that's important to consider is like which license uh, they are under, and that's why I have some blue ones and some uh, uh, dark ones, the blue ones are the ones that are commercially permissible. So always check the, lacen the license uh, when you're considering a model. So with Hugging Face, we make it super easy to access, we make it super easy to test uh, right from the model page, but also we want you to be able to quickly compare all those models, this whole jungle uh, of models, and we track over a thousands of them that are continuously evaluated for all the uh, common industry benchmarks to sort of give you an idea of like how would this work for you. Of course, benchmarks are great. It's just a first indication. For all of your use cases, you need to do your own testing on your own data. It's also an easy way to filter by license. I just talked about that. And by type of model is a pre-trained model, a chat model, instruction fine-tuned model, et cetera. Um, and what is its size? The Llama, the Falcon are there, and uh, probably Mistral uh, today is there as well. But today we're talking about search, we're talking about information retrieval, and the models that you need uh, for to do that are not necessarily those large language uh, models that do text generation. There's this like weird misconception right now with a lot of companies using OpenAI to create embeddings, which makes zero sense. Uh, but there are a lot of very um, uh, efficient custom-built uh, models uh, to do this work, and that's what the MTEB embeddings leaderboard allows you to quickly browse through and discover. So again, like we evaluate all these state-of-the-art models uh, for um, uh, commonly uh, used benchmarks, whichever type of task you're targeting here for the retrieval task. It's a lesser known leaderboard uh, on Hugging Face, but definitely check it out. It's going to be super interesting to you if you're here. And then uh, we're talking about like how to use uh, LLM in conjunction with retrieval. And we have a great demo for that. We call it Hugging Chat. It's sort of like the open source version of ChatGPT, right? You go in there and you interact with large language model. Uh, it has uh, web search integrated, has had that for, for weeks. Um, and it's available on hf.co slash chat. You can chat with Llama 270 billion. You can chat with Falcon 180 billion. You can chat with code Llama. So great way to experiment for free uh, with all those great models. And something that's maybe lesser known is that the application uh, behind uh, Hugging Chat is actually another open source project. It's Chat UI. Uh, I was, yesterday at a conference, there was like a whole bunch of new like rag startups and like I kept seeing like Chat UI on like <laughs> every other sort of rag uh, experience. So it's a great project for you to get started if you want to build a user interface that interacts with models um, in a great way. And now, putting it all together, so you have your Lama 270B, uh, but you want to ground the model in some truth, and you're going to use the web to do that search. We built this experience 
uh, with web search within hugging chats so that we retrieve ground truth information from the web and then feed that back to the model. I don't know if you can read, but I asked the model who won between France and Namibia during their last rugby World Cup game. And the model say it was France by 96-0. So must be a hallucination. No, actually, I checked it's true. <laughs> um, and so that's how you put uh, LLMs with RAC together to create this sort of uh, uh, truth grounded experiences. All right. So that was the latest and greatest from Hugging Face and what matters to you if you're interested in search. Um, next, I want to tell you about how you can build uh, your own AI apps using Hugging Face and a Hugging Face hub. So what's the hub? The hub is um, our website. Um, and it's where you can explore uh, and access all these uh, 300,000 models that I was talking about. And these are just, and I'm, I was too lazy to redo that slide, but there are more models now. Um, and these are just the free and publicly accessible models. Of course, like when you create a new repo on Hugging Face, whether it's a model or a data set or a space, which is a hosted application, you can choose for it to be public or private, private to you or your organization. You can easily filter all those models by tasks. I told you about tasks earlier, and by license and by the language. Uh, that's one of the great things about open source, that whatever language you're interested in, whatever task, whatever uh, type of domain uh, of data, there is a great model there for you that's been contributed to by the community. The next thing you can do with a Hugging Face Hub is to manage your own models. And under the hood, whether you're looking at a model or a data set or a space, it's a Git repository. That means you can look at everything that's inside, and that's the files tab that will show you every single file that's in the repo. That means that everything is version control. So you have access to the full history, so you can know who's made what uh, a change, uh, what is the commit, the revision number, so that you can build production systems that are robust and won't change under your user's feet. OK, so now you've found some models. Uh, you started creating your own repo to manage your own models. What's the next thing you can do? The next thing you can do is collaborate around your models and data sets. And for public repo, that means collaborating with the community. For a private repo, that means collaborating with your team. And how do you collaborate? You can create uh, pull requests uh, to submit some change. Uh, hey, you didn't put uh, the license for this model. Like, here's a change to add the license. There was some typo in the model card, all the way to, hey, uh, I'm adding some safe tensors uh, uh, format checkpoint uh, to your model. And you can have discussions around uh, the models. Um, so you can ask the uh, model author directly uh, to uh, question about the model. And actually, like, if you ever uh, um, wonder about like, any specifics about a specific model, like, don't email us. Like, use the community tab and uh, ask the, mo the model contributor directly. Saves me a bunch of emails. Um, so now you've uh, found some models, you've created your own, you started collaborating. What's the next thing you can do? Well, maybe you want to improve that model using your data. That's the process of fine tuning. We make it super easy. Um, and so if you want to train your model further, the, ones, uh, the one you've selected, you can either use auto train, which is using hugging face infrastructure and sort of like a click and drag and drop experience bring your JSON in, bring your CSV in, and we'll create models for you. Or you can use uh, Amazon SageMaker, where we have great deep learning containers that make this process super easy to do. OK, now you've trained a great model. You want to show it to your team. Uh, you want to show it to uh, the product manager and, uh, and, and show them what it can do. That's what Spaces is all about. Spaces, again, is like a hosted machine learning application. And all you need to do is to provide a simple Python file if you're using Streamlit or Gradio or use one of our pre-built Docker templates. Uh, Spaces is now like the most uh, popular uh, um, area of, uh, of Hugging Face. If you've ever seen on Twitter, like some of these cool images with like a spiral in them or like a hidden letters within the photo. Uh, or a DALI mini uh, image created. Like all these things, they've been created by people using spaces. And right now, the um, illusion diffusion space is, I think, the most, most popular. 
Okay, so now you've convinced your team, you've convinced the world that your model's great, you want to deploy it in production so you can actually build an app upon it. And that's what the deploy button does uh, on the model page. Again, variety of options. Uh, an option I want to, uh, to highlight is inference endpoints. It is our hosted uh, model inference. Um, and when you go from the world of data science to the world of like, I have an app that I need to scale and users coming uh, in droves and then leaving, like that's a whole different ball game. You have to deal with GPUs and Dockers and all that. So we try to make that super easy uh, to make uh, machine learning models essentially plug and play. Uh, so all you have to do is say, okay, which model do you want to deploy? Which cloud should it be on? Which region? What kind of compute you want to put behind it? And there you go. Uh, you got an API that you can plug your apps into. So in summary, how do you build AI apps, generative AI or not generative AI, with a Hugging Face Hub? Um, well, you can manage uh, your models, your data sets, and collaborate with your team all the world um, uh, around them. You can train them and improve them further with your own data. Uh, then you can demo them with Hugging Face Spaces. And finally, you can deploy them with inference endpoints. OK. So now I told you about the latest and greatest uh, uh, on Hugging Face, the resources that you can use to build great uh, information retrieval use cases. I told you about how you can build your own apps using Hugging Face. How do we put, all, put it all together? using the latest and greatest from Elastic. So here's my thinking. We have inference endpoints to make models plug and play. We get the Elasticsearch rele re relevance engine to do all of the smarts around the search. You can put these two things together and build your own, uh, your own system. And the new thing, because a year and a half ago, I think it was Elastic 8 uh, that shipped. Uh, with uh, Hugging Face models uh, built in. And shout out to Josh Devins at Elastic, uh, who built this amazing integration. Like, you've been able to sort of uh, build uh, your way uh, into creating those semantic searches with Hugging Face models on Elastic. But the new thing is that there's this new Elzer model um, that is directly integrated within Elasticsearch that can create some great embeddings. I haven't seen uh, Elzer on the uh, uh, leaderboard on Hugging Face, but maybe it'll show up there. I did see, however, the benchmarks uh, from the Elastic team, and it's like an amazing model. And so now you can do the whole embeddings creation directly within Elasticsearch, feed it within the vector database, and be good to go. You can also use Hugging Face as the large language model provider. So remember, in the Hugging Chat experience, it's chatting with Llama 270B, and then it's going to look for some information to augment, augment it. Uh, so that's how you can use an open LLM with an open source search engine in order to have a fully open source solution to power your RAG experience. RAG is all the rage. I think we should add a little letter, a little letter like retrieval augmented generation elastic. Um, and that's what I had for you today.